Woof! Welcome! Welcome, welcome to Two Dogs Digs Live Tuesday Night Hall Pass here on YouTube. And tonight it is time for, believe it or not already, What Sold in March. Yes, it's April already and it's time for a What Sold show. Uh, and this show we've got an extra special guest, one of our color commentaries from the side. You've, you've seen her type, you've seen her type fast. She's a witty little one and she's joining us with some of her souls. <laughs> That bad teacher, <laughs> Elisa, with her nonsense. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. And, of course, uh, the boy with the toys, Mr. Ader. <laughs> what are we going to do about Elisa? <laughs> and in our basement, we got Rick. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so happy to be here today. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, might, he might leave for a nap. Who knows? Uh, so yes, it's, uh, I just woke up from a nap, so I'm good to go. I have my pickies <laughs> and my root beer and Mr. Dog Dog. So today, yep, we're here for what sold in March. We're going to talk about some of the stuff that uh, we each sold over the month. Uh, a little bit of a bigger focus on stuff that Adrian sold uh, because he sent me so many souls. You don't have to um, and, and some stuff that at least sold. And one or two things that I sold as well. Um, but what I like to do is always start off the show where I can with anything that's a little newsy. And I thought this was kind of newsy. It was interesting for me. And this is something that Etsy has done. And for a while, I, it's, it's something that I think is really nice that they've actually started doing to their right on your actual listings, which is they've given you, Etsy's now given us a calculator to figure out exactly what you're going to make when you're pricing something. So it uses their fees. It builds everything in there for you to see. So I'm just going to show you um, this is something that we've got on our Etsy page. And when we're building anything on our Etsy page, um, you're building a draft. And when you get to, you can see there's nothing in it. This is just one of my drafts. But when you get down to the pricing side of things, it used to just say price. And then underneath it, it never really, that I can remember, it never said estimated profit. So now if you actually click on this, it will detail out your cost your profit and your estimated fees. So you can look at something and go, oh, wait a second, I want to price this and this item cost me $10 at the thrift store. Or I got to get rid of this little thing or it won't disappear on me. So um, it actually, I put in the $48 price. It's telling me if I put this in that my fees are $5 and I'm going to make $33 on this. If I put in a price of $5, I'm going to make $38 on it. If I sell this for $100, I'm going to make $85 on it. And I just think it's a nice little added thing that Etsy's done to help people who are building their very first sort of uh, item to be able to pop in there and go, oh, this is how much something makes. Because I think a lot of times people don't actually even really think too much when they're listing stuff. It's like, well, what did I pay for this? How much time goes into it? Like all that sort of stuff. So I always like when people can take a look and say what they're putting on. So if they put something for $8 and it costs them six, if they put that in, they'll go, wait, I'm making a dollar. Should I really be selling this at that? <laughs> but are they really making a dollar when you factor in the amount of time and gas and time to list and photograph and shipping supplies and all of that fun stuff? Yeah, but the shopping part's fun. So uh, <laughs> yeah, we've had that debate already. So, so I'll, I'll leave you to that one. Let me start with first of all. So Elisa's just joining us live. So here, I just want to get a little background on Elisa. So how long have you been doing the reselling thing? Nineteen ninety-eight. And where are you located? In everybody, Philly. <laughs> In Philly versus everybody. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. So when you look at doing so, I mean, that, so you've been doing this for like, oh God, 16 years now. No, 26 years. Math, math, you're not, math, your math ain't mathing. My math ain't mathing, right. 26 years now. And when you're listing stuff, do you keep that, is that first thing in your mind? What did I pay for this? Uh, Not really. It is more of a, um, doing comps and seeing what is the highest I could that it sold for in the past and, you know, and how close could I get to it? You know, it's, I mean, I generally don't 
pay up for stuff. I mean, I did, I did buy, um, you know, I did buy something like a an NSGO Beauty and the Beast '90s music box. I paid like 45, 40 bucks for, but I generally just base it off of comps. Okay, so that that little tool wouldn't help you that much. Do you list yeah. on eBay? Uh, eBay. I've been doing Macari, um, mostly mostly eBay and Poshmark. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you haven't tried Etsy yet. Uh, I got kind of got kicked off at Etsy once, and oh. <laughs> now I have another account. Mm, yeah. <laughs> well, don't forget, if you do try them, you can use that crossless magic to do anything. What do you think about the news on Macari that just happened last week? I don't talk about Macari a lot because. Mm -hmm. Probably about 70% of the people that we have on our channel are Canadian, and they don't actually get to use Mercari very easily. What well, do you think about that? Any, if anybody doesn't know, Mercari last week decided that it's an online marketplace, and they were uh, they decided last week, sort of out of the blue, it seemed. It didn't seem that many, many people knew about this, but they decided to switch all the fees to the buyer. So the buyer, the seller pays nothing now. Wow. The buyer pays the delivery, they pay a fee, but the biggest change, and this is where it's a bit controversial, is any type thing they receive within three days, they can return it for any reason whatsoever. They don't have to have a reason. They can just go, I'm returning this. And so what do you think about something like that as a Mercari person? Uh, I'm not specifically a uh, Mercari. I'm going to say Percari. That doesn't make that's like a drug or something. Um, so basically, well, I love their icon with the the walking away chicken with the button. Yeah, that makes me laugh. But there's they there's not really that I could find anything specific about who is paying the return fee, the return postage on these three day returns for any any reason. Um, and I mean, I think, you know, like they're just trying to, you know, okay, well, you know, we're going to put all the, all the fees on the, on the buyer, all the taxes, all these, you know, miscellaneous things they're looking to, uh, for those buyers who are just, you know, like, you know, I have to say Gen Z or whatever, you know, or, 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 you know, greatest generation who may not actually look into the, the, the minutia of the costs. And say, oh, I guess that's what it costs. You know, I'll just pay that. And they're not comparing to other websites. So I think either that's the smartest decision to against eBay or the worst decision where they're going to just, you know, say, oh, this is not a good idea and drop it, you know, in three months. <laughs> well, yeah, because, I mean, we, people are being charged their fees right now. I mean, you're getting charged, like, as a buyer, mm -hmm. I'm charging you delivery fees and everybody. Poshmark, it's a little different because if people buy something on Poshmark, they see you're getting charged twelve fifty, and Poshmark takes that or whatnot takes that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if they actually show, and this is your fee to buy this. It probably mm -hmm. just gets buried into that amount that's like, this is the amount of the item and this is your cost for buying the item. See, mm -hmm. I got to say that, that as someone who's averse to trying new platforms, like I've been wanting to go on Etsy for a while now, but keep putting it off because I'm just, you know, whatever. But but being able to try for a couple of months with no fees, that would really in, it convince me to actually try. I know that Macari's not up here, but but ultimately, if another platform were to say, hey, no fees for whatever three months or whatever, I'd be like, yeah, I'll try that. Now, if you really are wanting to try Mercari and you are Canadian, if you have a cross-border shipper that uh, you can use so basically it has to basic it has to be somebody who'll let you drop packages off so it can be dyk in alberta it can be stallion express uh it can be uh red robin or robin red i can't remember the proper name of it in winnipeg running red running red uh if it's any of those you can use it you can't use chit chats but you have a us based address and you can set up and you can sell just like if you want to sell on poshmark us versus Poshmark Canada, you can do that same thing, but you have to have a US based address. So and it's the, just yeah, an the, interesting the thing Craig is trying or the I could add to Craig's is what you're looking for is a a, a cross border shipper that accepts third party postage. Because yeah. a lot of the apps and websites will be able to pro either provide you postage like Poshmark 
I don't know if Mercari gives you the postage or if you buy the postage through them or if you're up to it on your you do it on your own. But the point is, if you have to use a third party postage, then you need a cross border shipper that permits that. And, and another new thing with Mercari that I, that I that I heard about is that they are doing a thing where you can cross list from eBay and maybe some other websites. So you can cross list your, you could take, you know, similar to what you, you know, the other one we've been talking, you've been talking about the, you know, you can take an eBay listing and convert it into Macari pretty easily according to them. I haven't tried it that way though. There's another comment actually, Tina made the comment too, which is true, is you have to pay $2 to get your money out now yeah. from Mercari, which I don't think you had to do before. Uh, mm -hmm. it's like, Heather is asking, why are your glasses reflecting, but the guy's glasses aren't? Because <laughs> these are these are like Dollar Tree, Dollar Twenty Five Tree, and they they don't have the non-reflective lenses. I'm cheap. Thank you, Heather. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> oh, Sherry says Craig's screen is down from eye level. So sometimes when you're tilting your head, it's coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I just say? It's really My nice hair's of you short. I can I can't help it. It's, it's really nice of you at least to have a picture of me over your shoulder, left shoulder like that, or right shoulder. Oh, yeah. I, I, I put it up there especially for you, Adrian. Oh. That's, that's the captain. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's Adrian. Oh, I see. Uh, a big hello, which I did not get a chance yet, to, sorry to say, anybody. Um, <laughs> well, actually, to all the people who are members here of the Kennel Club and everybody who's joining us here. And don't forget, if you have comments or questions, ask them below if you're watching us after this on the live and you're watching it on a record. We always have try and address those questions either in the, like right underneath you uh, when somebody puts a comment, we try to answer those right away um, or we'll answer them in a future show. Uh, Lisa Wallace has a comment about the only issue with Etsy's estimator is it doesn't give you the option to factor in the 12% that you may have to pay for offsite ads. So that, that is a very excellent point to say, uh, to put in there. Thank you so much for clarifying that. Uh, so uh, let's see. Yeah, Charmaine is in Windsor and can't find a cross-border shipper. We may bump into Charmaine and Brian if I can get Rick to do the longest yard sale or in the world in the US coming up in August, but we're never really that sure. Uh, but you never know. So again, right now we're talking about March and I thought I'd start off with one little strange thing before I get into the, the amazing stuff that Elisa and Adrian have, which is, you remember a while back I did a, a, a little show and I showed you I bought all of these notepads, right? I got the little notepad and I showed you that I did sell a notepad for like a hundred bucks. I sold another one for 50 bucks. Well, one of the other ones we sold we found out a really interesting thing about how USPS works. This is the one we sold. This is the little. Um, uh, this is our little uh, little set of two little sets of cards. Nineteen dollars, no big deal. We sent this on March the fourth, and a few days after, like a week after we sent it, we got an inquiry, and the inquiry was, "Can you tell me why they've gone back to you?" And we said, "What do you mean they've gone back?" And we went and looked at the tracking. And it seemed that the package went from us through our cross-border shipper over to Niagara Falls and then went down to Boise. And when it got to Boise, Boise decided to send it back to Niagara Falls. And then Niagara Falls decided they should send it to Boise. And then Boise decided they should send it back to Niagara Falls. This is literally the tracking and routing that this particular item went through. Look at this. Accepted, <laughs> departed, accepted, <laughs> departed in Denver, in Denver, in Boise, in Buffalo, in Rochester, in Rochester. Hey, it went to Salt Lake City now. It went to Phoenix and back to Buffalo. Okay. Then it went to Rochester and then it went to <laughs> Salt Lake City again. Yeah. And then back to Buffalo. And then it went back to Rochester and then back to Salt Lake City. And then it went to Boise. <laughs> and then it arrived. What we found out was this is what the USPS actually, there's a term for it. It's called looping. I didn't know that there was such a term for this thing, but the, the, we had the most amazing buyer on this and they sent us a note. We actually had another set of these cards. So we sent them the other set of cards. So they got the other set of cards for free. <laughs> we didn't care. We didn't pay that much for them, but they went to their post office. The po they had to, they tried filing something locally at their local post office. 
they ended up going in about something. And it literally was, they finally found out about a week and a half ago that an entire, what they called skid, was looping. That's a technical term. That So there was not just our package. Everything that happened to be in potentially this truck just kept going place to place to place for no real reason whatsoever. <laughs> Time travel. She got it today. She is thrilled. She says that we're some of the best we're the best sellers she's ever like dealt with in her entire life. We've been so kind to her and everything like that. How much can I send you for the other pack? No, you get them all for free. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michael made a comment that he sent items from uh, Miami to Jacksonville and it went to New York and then circled back before coming to Jacksonville. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a little bit like I've been around the world. Well, Boise and Salt Lake City, I don't know if that's the world. Sorry to those Boise and Salt Lake City viewers, but <laughs> uh, Louette had a package bounce around Seattle for a week. I have one bouncing so, in Toronto right now. Um, yeah, it, we, yes, it's a UPS, USPS personal yeah, file. To me, it actually looks like some of the media mail packages that you know they used as truck filler. <laughs> they go all over the place until they reach their destination. Yeah. But it, I just wanted to show you that sort of thing is you now have a technical term. If you have somebody who's actually said, why is my package moving from one place to another? You can actually tell them this has somehow got caught in looping. Please contact your local post office and tell them this seems to be looping. Yes, I guess, Holly, I guess this is looping is the code for we don't have room for it here. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't understand why, like this went to a couple of places, then all of, all of a sudden out of the blue, it was like going back and forth and back and forth, and then for some reason it decided it was going to Phoenix. Like Phoenix is just once in this entire well, list. It was weird. Know. Salt Lake City is an odd place for it to go. Like actually, no, that's one of the distribution centers. If you look at the distribution centers for USPS, now that everything is ground instead of air. Like first class, it used to go either ground or air or a combination. Now it's all ground. Oh, this is a great one. I had a, I'm in Indiana. I had a hat go to Tennessee via Guam. <laughs> That's just got me beat. That's got me beat. Okay. Gonna, well, well, with that, I think it's time to show I'm gonna, something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to leave the screen now. Yep. <laughs> Leaked out of existence. So I thought, let's start with Indeed, something. Fabulous. Like we were just talking about something fun, but let's look at something fun. And this is one of the first things that we got sent from Elise. There we are. There we go. We got this. Spaghetti. That's gross. Elisa. Is that gross? Spaghetti. <laughs> it was it's delicious. Food. So fake spaghetti. It is fake haka nugget. That hatsun hatsun the hatsun nanak. I can't say it. Japanese. Sushi, not sushi. That's Spaghetti. Enough. I can't think. I've been working all day. It was a hundred and five dollars. <laughs> shit. <laughs> I would I would literally walk past that in the shop and go, "What the hell?" Oh, I had the greatest time, like holding up the spaghetti, the fork, like pretend holding the fork, pretend to eat it. I was, you know, it has been sitting on the top of a bookshelf that I like right in my photography area for, for about two years pretend and i'm like please don't fall off i know this thing's gonna fall off but i'm too lazy to move it and it didn't fall off and it's actually sold to a repeat buyer which is amazing and i love your name Delaware resellers yeah that is bizarre uh, what, my name or the spaghetti <laughs> i'm gonna do another one of elisa's which is this lovely little crystal what does that say Waterford, it's Waterford Crystal. Waterford, ooh, Waterford Crystal. It's a book. It's, it's actually book size. And oh, thick. like it's real book size. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My family, uh, my Uncle Nicky ran the Waterford plant in, in Waterford for years. And my uh, my cousin-in-law, she's uh, still a, a sculptor there. Um, so, yeah, it, it's uh, I've seen that before. I think Uncle Nicky has that in his home. I love how you did this with all the different pictures of it too so you could see that it's not lit but if you did put a light by it it's mm -hmm. like it's really it really stands out and i guess that's what helped you get a hundred and twenty five dollars it's lit as the kids say well done <laughs> well i i got it at a a boutique 
thrift store run by uh, elderly ladies who only buy Lily Pulitzer and they really didn't know what they had. But, you know, I, I bought it because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a librarian, a school uh, elementary school librarian. And, you know, books are my bread and butter, literally. So I liked it. Um, Holly's asking where the, oh, Holly says I've sold a lot of spaghetti forks, but maybe probably not with plastic spaghetti on them. I'm not <laughs> sure which one Charmaine is asking. Where did you find the spaghetti? Um, the, sp the spaghetti I found in this overly crowded church sale up in Pennsylvania, like in the Poconos, I think. And, you know, I just threw it in there because I'm like, you know, I like, I love the ridiculous and, you know, and the ridiculous sells. So it, 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 didn't, it didn't break on the way back. And I had one of my big Ikea bags. So I just threw it in there and it took a while, but it sold. Well, speaking of ridiculous. That's me. No. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Freaking, that's, 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 that's not me. Freaking gift that keeps on giving. He have, He's still selling shit from the $31 Barbie doll lot that he got back in January. <laughs> so I don't know. I think if he has more in this for next month, I'm not even going to let him on the show. Yeah, here's a couple of other things. Oh, look where these were from, Craig. So this was the lot that you may remember he bought just this big batch of stuff from. And this is his sales so far this past month on this. He sold a fashion queen for like 35 bucks. What is this? That's really cool. It, it's a pre-printed uh, fashion um, uh, pattern, but you literally just cut it out and you make the clothes. And there was a bidding war for it. And uh, I was really happy about that. <laughs> it actually looks like Alan's, the colors for mm -hmm. Alan's uh, outfit. And then I love this. Headless, armless. Legs, half a leg. <laughs> no. No. But again, somebody would have thrown this out. Yeah. I, you still I got made, 13 bucks for it. We made my money on the hedgehog, so everything from that was being gravy. So why not sell this for Carl's <laughs> twist <laughs> night? Adrian. I'm not bitter, no. <laughs> But people will buy anything. I mean, I was surprised that this actually sold twice. The first person didn't pay, so I relisted it. Um, but uh, yeah, that and was a wild was. Ken, yes, a, such a wild Ken party that um, eggs yes, ended up off on their own in it. Just <laughs> torsos, just nothing but torsos. <laughs> Serial killer can. Oh, speaking of that, here's, here's a serial killer. Who is that? Yes. 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 Uh, John Wick. Something, <laughs> something to do with torsos and body part and body parts, and maybe World's Fair. Okay. No. No. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Did you do that yourself? Or? Yeah. I. I. That's my hobby. You know, my free time. Yeah. You know, I. I paint serial killers. No, it's not Butch Cassidy. Oh, yep, yep, Swoop got it. What is it? I don't even know who that is. Butch Cassidy? <laughs> yep. H. H. Holmes. He was the, 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 the guy who had the hotel, the 1883 World's Fair in Chicago, and basically had like rooms for, you know, like it's imagine Sweeney Todd, but in real life. Oh, okay. Well, and I found this. It's in a in a creepy odd oddporium in Delaware. It's painted blood red and pink. You can't really tell from here, but yeah, not Johnny. <laughs> Speaking of Sweeney Todd, here's a gentleman who played Sweeney Todd in a in a for, uh, show of Sweeney Todd. I did, yes. That had a really weird scene in it with people all dressed in metal, sort of a punk rock steampunk thing that we just didn't understand. But the rest of it was good, and Adrian was fabulous in it. Let's see. Okay, Adrian's yeah. doing a lot of this stuff, though. Another one of his. He's buying a lot of stuff, like we keep telling everybody. Look at Maxwell. This is another one of his. I won't. I wouldn't. I don't even know how he finds these things or what makes him buy them. But take a look at this. This is another lot. I'm trying to figure out the best way to show it. <laughs> this is another lot, and it's just like. I don't even know if you would look at this, but 
you looked at this, Adrian. Like, no, I was bidding on something else that I ended up uh, not getting. Um, but that since I was going up there anyway, I bid on three other things and I, I got this one lanterns, candle, toy like this entire lot. And you paid eleven dollars mm -hmm. for this whole lot. Let's see if I can get that picture back there. So everything on the bookcase except the bookcase, correct. And this is what you've managed to sell. From. <laughs> Maybe forty-seven fifty. I think I sold them for. Um, I didn't know who it was. I knew it was a, a Confederate officer, but I, I didn't cross my mind that it was Robert E. Lee until I actually did some research. I went, oh, that's probably who this is. Um, but yeah, no, it went to the south. <laughs> Yeah, you know, shelf units at, at auctions can do really, really well. That's, uh, I mean, like interesting stuff like that. We actually found uh, a couple of things from ours that were at stuff like that. This is something of ours that we sold. And it was just one of the things that a lot of people say, don't buy these. This is, and the reason <laughs> I just wanted to show you is they still sell. We were at a thrift store and somebody had donated these charming tales. And they're by Inesco or Fitz and Floyd. They look, a lot of cases, they look really cheap. Uh, this is actually what it was, is little mice. And what we did was we actually looked in the store. Somebody donated, I think, 14 of these. And it, and they were all like $3.99 a piece. And we looked through all 14 of them because they all have little names by them. So this happened to be Daughter, Your Goodness Warms My Heart. Um, and it was in the box. They were all perfect. We ended up picking out. Rick did a lot of pictures of this. I'm getting diabetes by, just by the title. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and let's face it, if you actually found a mouse in your teacup, you'd throw that teacup out. You'd never drink from that teacup again. <laughs> For those reasons. Well, again, we, we picked it up just because we thought we took a look at this. And we actually bought, I think, four of these for $3.99 and left the other 12. Um, and this is, I think, the last one that we have that's sold, and it's sold for 40 bucks. So nice. sometimes you can be looking at stuff thinking, oh, this has got to be like that junky stuff. It kind of looks dollar store. It kind of looks like all those uh, precious moments and things like oh, that. You're just going to pass over. Like Carl with that bird. Remember he had that bird? Yeah. yeah. So it's take that extra little look at some of those things and see. Actually, Susan actually put a note in here that's really interesting. The artist who designs the Charming Tales lives near you. He's very nice in his sign pieces. Well, that would even be better if you had a sign one. I should have sent them down to you, got them signed, and had them sent back to us. <laughs> uh, Elisa, did you say one night that you sell haunted objects or dolls? I couldn't mm -hmm. remember. <laughs> that is a yes, oddly. But yeah, I, my, I, <laughs> I love taking old, decrepit I said on purpose, <laughs> decrepit dolls and and writing backstories for them. And that really, really increases my sales. If a doll has if a, if a doll has a backstory um, and, you know, it, it's it's fun for me. And, the you know, it, it, it gives interest to it. I mean, so I you mean to, like in your item description, mm -hmm. you write a backstory for one. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. Susie, and she was a bad girl, so she was locked in the, under the stairs for four years. No, I, I actually, I don't have, because um, the last one I sold was over 90 days ago, but I could always post in the in craft. Um, yeah, it's one of my specialties. I I really am good at it um, because I I read stories for a living, and I know it creeps people out, you know, being you know, creepy and and... So it's <laughs> you're not doing anything to the doll. You're just picking up something that go. This just looks freaky. I go to, if I go to like I mean you go to a safe sales and there's always that one bedroom that has creepy dolls on the bed that are like weird or like you know like this like what the hell happened in this thing? And then I make a backstory and I mean I've sold them for a couple hundred dollars at, at times. Well, I should look at your posting because I have a bunch of creepy dolls left over. Oh, oh yes. No, it's, and where are those creepy dolls from, Adrian? <laughs> the box. Like, yeah. They live in the box. The two of you can get together and she can help you write backstories on those little freaky things. And then that will be in your What's Sold in April section. No, I'm Max sold in the dolls. Go to Max Sold and go. I got more, more than enough money out of that, that block. Like, those can just go to Max Soldier. You know, I'm gonna take the Superman behind you and make him make him evil. It's I love that. 
Holly's suggesting that you have Adrian record the narration for the backstory on the doll. With the accent. You got to do the accent, too. And then you can, yeah, you can film it, like, sitting on one of your turntables, and Adrian can read out, I was a young girl, and then... <laughs> It's yeah, Donna got creepy dolls from the Hoarder House. We actually did see a couple of those uh, creepy things, yeah, at the Hoarder House. It's true. I was just going to try and see if I can find the what you're talking about in a way. What about the box of dolls I pulled from the closet that hadn't been opened yet where they had all melted together? Oh, that, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was, uh, yeah, the, at the, there was one of those things at the... Uh, the Hoarder House. At the Hoarder House. It's the last closet he went into. Uh, was literally melted, do like dolls' faces melted against each other. I could sell that. Um, but this is what I was trying to see if I can show you. This is, I mean, you can't see a good, uh, there's not a good view of it, but uh, this is, there's one of those things that we got. You can just see it down here. This little doll here, besides this guy who's creepy enough, this doll was a bride doll that the bride's face had been superimposed on. Yeah, that's what it, it was like. Just, just a little too freaky. And when we showed that in the Thrift Hall of Fail, we had a bunch of people go, did you buy it? Did you buy it? <laughs> no, we just thought it was too creepy. But now we know there's a story there for what you can also <laughs> look for. Speaking of stories, it's got to be, I think you put these in just because of Adrian, this is my guess, but I don't know. You can tell me. Like, little action figures. Spidey Man. Yeah, those are, I got... I don't remember where I got them. I got a ton. I think it was a garage sale. And, you know, I like to arrange them in fun and different ways just to, you know, invoke interest. Um, you know, just um, I actually sold them twice because they're so tiny. They're like, you know, they're two, two and a half inches. I kind of, they kind of fell behind my, uh, my shelf and I couldn't find them. <laughs> then I, I found them and I relisted them. I sold them. But there's, there's actually another thing that I sent you, Craig, that is um, Craig related. Not Craig related. That's Adrian related. Um, yeah, that's this. Mm hmm. <laughs> Hoppo. Mm hmm. Because you discussed that, um, I don't know, a month or two ago, I guess, or maybe more. And I just, I literally just sold them. And, or 20 bucks. Uh huh. And that was on sale. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, I got to go back and just this. I have to pop pop this on. <sighs> Swoops. I used to sell pantyhose and old smelly shoes, and I did bank on that. The better the story, the higher the bids went. <laughs> uh -huh. At which point they decided they better get a post office box. <laughs> <laughs> That's epic. I love uh, that. And Hydrant says, I've got creepy dolls that I can't find out anything about. I was going to post them in craft. Now you know. Post them in craft, and Elisa will help build a story for them. <laughs> It's a side hustle. I'll write stories for everybody. You should do that. I actually, there is a, a small story that, um, let's see, I've done, I'm behind this. There is a small story that I will sort of tell. I'll bring this guy back in for it, which was. I know what it is. We used to do, every once in a while, I drag him around to do a, a show, uh, a live show where we get a table at, at the St. Lawrence. This Market is going back Toronto. like 30 years. This is going back, yeah, 25, 30 years. When I was working full time and wait, had wait, no just patience like for toys. There we go. There you go. It's yours. You can talk. Well, no. I, I was, I was going to tell the story and you're interrupting. Well, you can tell it. I'm just adding my commentary. Now, basically, we he, he booked a table at a small toy show that happens every, I think it was the first Sunday of every month. That's yeah, a St. Lawrence Market. It wasn't a toy show. Fine. You tell the story. No, you're interrupting. Up. No, no, no. Bye. Okay. Uh, it, <laughs> it's, a, it's a weekly market. Um, and we had a table at it. The only time we ever took a table. I was smoking at that point, And I kept uh, every hour or so, I'd say, I'm going out for a smoke. He hated working it. But every time I came back, something else had sold. So I'd stand there for 45 minutes and nothing would sell. And I'd go, well, I'm going to go out for an hour or I'm going to go out for 10 minutes, have a smoke and come back. And at one point in the middle of the day, there was this one doll that I didn't even mean to bring. It was on the bottom of a box and it was kind of disgusting. And I forgot to take it out when I loaded the other stuff up. So it was left in the bottom of this little toy box that was at the bottom of our table. And I came back and the toy box was there, but there was no doll. And I said, what ended up happening? Well, Rick right. decided that somebody no somebody picked it up, and Rick created a story on the spot about 
Oh, that's, I can't remember the right thing, but it's like, that was my Aunt Tilly's. Tilly loved that doll for so long, and then she lost it. It got buried in the, like, just this huge, like, story, 10 minutes long. And then I think he sold it for, like, 50 bucks. It was a dirty <laughs> old thing that we weren't even supposed to bring. But it was all yep. about the story. Yep. And then, and then now, now, now it's possessed by Aunt Tilly's spirit. Did well, I she do was you a lovely old woman. She yeah, it, 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 it was know. actually 80 bucks. So <laughs> win for me. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one up is a, a strange little one that I looked at. And I thought, is this a beanie baby? It's like, no. What the hell is it? It's hey, a little a stupid diving lobster. <laughs> <laughs> It is literally trident diving equipment. Mm -hmm. Dive buddies. What is a dive buddy? And oh, why is it worth 25 bucks? <laughs> that is bizarre. Well, <laughs> I have a couple of them. On a, on a sea creature. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a 20, it's a 2558. Thank you. Um I, I picked them up. I mean, this this is one these are one of my older buys. I mean, it's, I've had it for at least five years in my garage, in my stuffed animal bucket. Um, and you know, it's apparently really rare, you know, it's trident. I, I guess, I don't know. I don't is know anything weight, about diving is it weighted or something. No, oh. no. And, and the straws, it has a basic old straw and it's bent and I, it, I wonder why it's called a dive. What's a, why is it a dive because, buddy? Or... Because it has a diving mask and a, and a snorkel thingy. Oh, okay. The company is a, is a <clears throat> scuba gear manufacturer oh okay so looks it, like someone just stuck a straw in his, it looks like you struck a straw in no. <laughs> it was like that. but i mean that just sold i just i just sent i just mailed that yes yesterday yep that was first uh, like uh someone with like a one uh one one feedback <laughs> and i'm like no it's a lobster thank you uh heather, crustaceans. Said, heather said she bought something cheaper to show the grandpa was at Manning the booth, there was an announcement. The lady who bought the Fire King, please come back to the booth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so somebody bought something that they weren't supposed to sell, I guess. Here's another thing that Adrian ended up picking up from another one of his Max Sold finds. There's a few of these in here. And again, it's just to show you different places that people get stuff and try and sell stuff from. This was, we actually had to pick this up for you, didn't we? You did, yes. And I spent a lot of money on this to get this, but I, I figured it'd be worth it. So it was uh, Schleich, which we've talked about the brand before for loose things, almost like those horses kind of thing that you can find all those kind of things. And the interesting thing was you picked this up and you were like, you knew what you were picking up. You I sold did. it. For I'm surprised you sold it. <laughs> I had it on display at my house for a week and I went, you know what? I need money. <laughs> I always did buy it with the intent to, to sell it. it. Just when I got it in hand, it was like it was really pretty because I, I, you know, me and cowboys and stuff. And uh, but no, it was it had to go. It's just too big. The box is like you know, bigger than this, huge. Okay, Heather is too nice. She was the woman who bought the Fire King, and she used to be nice, so she went <laughs> back. <laughs> now, yeah. Notice how she said, "I used to be nice." Finders keepers. <laughs> It's like that 40 bucks in your briefcase. I would not have come back. <laughs> this is this another, is I don't this even know. Story. This is another, I'm looking at this going, some reason you bury lane buddies. You decided to pick this up. Yeah. I think I actually have that guy. Somebody home, like a homemade bagpiper guy. That's oh, I know like that a, guy. Mr. He's Mr. Wonderful or something. Yeah. Like that. That's, and then that, that is the very lane buddy. Now, is that why you decided to buy it? Uh, I actually bought it for the kites. Oh, you wanted it for the kite? <laughs> yes. Which I have not listed because they're just too big. They're too long. So I'm going to put them in that cell and just get my money back. But that's okay. Uh, Grandpa Bob there did the job for me. Hey, Grandpa Bob. Very nice. So Chris. six bucks for the lot, 63 for Grandpa on his own. Yeah. Yeah. And what was lovely about this is a gentleman called Bob in the States bought him and was so happy that he got him. His plan is... And since he's retired, is to take the puppet and do entertainment for <laughs> children 
in hospitals. And, and he's just so excited about this win. And he says, you know, it's it's called named after me and I'm going to make so many wonderful memories. And I'm like, yay, awesome. But he gave me a glowing reference. It was a glowing review rather. And it was lovely. And he, and he, he was thrilled. When you looked at that, what was it that made you look? Barry Lane Buddies? Or did I you don't go, see, I don't you see saw anything. the kite and that's why I thought I want to look at what that is. I saw the kite and opened it up, and I saw the venture Chris dummy, and knew I, would, I could sell that for at least twenty bucks, right? Uh, and so the, the, bank. Hey. the kite, the kite was probably a twenty dollars sale too, and I thought for six bucks, I, I can make probably about eighty bucks off this whole lot together. It's a terrible like picture for these guys too, though, because when you look at this as a photo, but the Craig, two puppets are on their side. Haven't you noticed that I tend to do really well when I buy shit that looks like shit? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like that, the, the twenty-one dollar lot from Hamilton with all the dolls inside, it was really awful pictures of, of what was in that box. Well, it's like it was someone's bed or something. We yeah. talked about before how when we have stuff that we like don't know what the hell we're going to do with it, and then we decide. I literally had these little old-fashioned die-cut paper things. It was a baggie I got at a baggie wall. I had probably sixty or seventy of them in this bag, maybe even a hundred of them. And I just, they were already organized too. So somebody wrapped like this little set of six for like in the bag in a little saran wrap. And I tried selling these on whatnot and I couldn't sell them anywhere. I tried listing them on Etsy. I couldn't sell them anywhere. And so I was literally, it's one of those weird things. I was thinking about it one night at about 11 o'clock and I went, I gotta, what am I gonna do with those damn things? I should just probably throw them out. And that night, this first set sold for fourteen dollars and paid for the it's entire like little orphan, little orphan Annie in that one dress, the red dress at the bottom. It's kind of the Campbell's kids, but it's a company called Merrimack, and actually they sell a lot, which was really surprising. Why I haven't sold any others? That dress um, there, which is really that, strange. Little orphan Annie's dress. <laughs> Sherry's like, I think we need to look at some Max sold this week. <laughs> yeah, Shirley Temple kind of Cupid doll looked to me a bit like. Uh, yeah, Dolly Dingo, all of those things. So, um, but the other ones don't have anything to do with this. It just happened that they were all batched in together. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll try and see what I can do with them. And I did tell you guys that I did clear out uh, a lot of stuff from two shelves of board games, but I only kept the good stuff. So I donated a bunch of stuff that I'd paid four bucks for and five bucks for, but I thought, you know, it's not worth trying to sell. I did keep the good things. And this was one that took about a month to sell, but not that long from when I listed it. It's the enchanted palace and this is one of those electronic games that you build the whole palace together and when you have a little magic wand i know i didn't keep it i could have kept it but i did play it <laughs> by myself i played it because as you walk around it was the jewel is here you save me you are the princess of the kingdom all this silly little stuff i did play it to make sure it worked but managed to sell it for 85 bucks nice craig if there's no video it didn't happen uh, no, it's, I didn't do a video of this because we'd already put it back into the box before I <laughs> No, you didn't. Rick, Rick, I said, should I build it? He goes, no, I'm not going to film you doing that. I refuse to film you doing that. <laughs> Hydrant says, Merrimack made for Victorian repro paper goods. You have a bunch of them Valentine cards. Yeah, that's just it. There's like a whole bunch of those. Uh, oh, Sherry just spent <laughs> $424 on jewelry. She's got to watch her pennies. I hope not during the show, like you were doing two things at once and overbid on something. So uh, let me just pop. Let's see. Let's see. Another one of the fabulous things we got the horses. We got the lobster. We got who are these guys? Lobster. Uh oh. Um, Price yep. of real women. That, that is another ode to Adrian um, with his little uh, train thingies. Um, things I learned from Adrian horses and train thingies. These are. These are Miniature so, turfy green. They're German. They're, they're yeah. from a company called, called Preiser, which is mm -hmm. a partner of Elastalin. Elastalin Preiser was one company once upon a time. And they make uh, figures in multiple scales for different size train sets. And those look to be uh, O gauge train, which, which make them 132 so compatible with it, it, it should say on the listing. But those uh, that is a Adrian plus a Craig one because that was a baggy wall. Nice. Um, and I, I they were in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and I saw them plus some playing cards, you know, and I'm like, 
huh, if it's if if there's a baggy wall, there must be more, or whatever Craig yeah. says. So, <laughs> so I think one on the I, wall, it's probably not all. <laughs> thank you. So I scanned them and I found a couple. Uh, I found actually a lot. Um, and this is the first it sold within uh, within a day, I think. Stuff. So so I learned and I take it all in. Baggy, do you mind I'm asking? Do you, I'm sorry, what? What did you pay for the baggy? Um, it was under five dollars. And there was like more than once. There was multiple sets. That's amazing. Fantastic. Nice find. Uh, let me just see what I got next. You just you know, this is they were sort of in the same world. There's the grandpa. This is something again. The, sometimes Adrian, you actually don't you, you bid high on things. Like we just saw the like, yes. um, and I guess if you know what it is that you're looking for, this is the yes. type of thing that you'd actually go, okay, I can bid on this. And this was. A set. This is the max sold listing. This is like so. This started at a buck. Yep. And you bought this obviously because I guess when I first look at it, you bought it because of the brass figure. But they're both brass figures. Oh, they're um, both brass figures. Yeah, that was just in, and that is a the lady is broken off of, of a lamp or something, uh, but she's nude and reclined. She's uh, from uh, 1911 to 1922, uh, is best guess. Um, and then he is definitely. Uh, uh, 1914, um, and that makes I think it's 1914, uh, and so they're both antiques, which is something I don't normally dabble in. But that's uh, the Dying Call, which is a very famous statue. Uh, it's a reproduction of a Roman statue, uh, a Roman reproduction of a Greek statue, sorry, uh, and um, it's very very famous. And that version there, because it's a solid bronze piece, like it's quite heavy. Um, but it's you see these in all different sort of formats in alabaster. I know that Santini made a cop version of this, but this brass one has a lot of value, as you can wow. see. Is wow. gold is gold German? Um, is that gold is gold is French. French. So French, a French French person. But asterisk so the gold. You French. started the bidding on this at one hundred and seventy eight dollars. Yep. So that's again when we when we talk about doing auctions, the one thing we always tell people is start with what you want to try and get. So you would have been happy if you got 178 for it. Yeah, I wanted to get get at least double my money back, right? Um, and I I did that plus. So and I, you I still have the other one. Yeah, and she's listed right now at forty five dollars, and um, I have uh, nine watchers on her. Oh, that's an interesting kind of thing to have picked up. We picked up something that Rick didn't want me to pick up, but I did. This was actually at. Um, a uh, flea market, but he didn't like it because it was so big. Um, it is, uh, let me just try and get the picture up here. But it is a vintage mosaic. So, this is the kind of tile kits that you used to get with all the little gravel pieces. And it is the like literally an unused tile kit from I think 1960s or 70s. Wow. So art. even yeah. the glue was still in there. Um, shows you how to do it all by picturesque. Uh, and I was really surprised. I got this at a flea market from somebody who had, they do estates all the time and they have some funky stuff. But I said, how much is this? And they said, five bucks. I would, I would keep it just for the box. The and box I was like, cool. oh, five bucks. Sure, I'll take it. Well, I listed it. It took about three months to sell. I thought it might sell before Christmas. And I originally had this priced at about 125, but I did, uh, or no, at 175, but I ended up selling it for 125. I, I so, saw they had the, the cat, the atomic cat one. If you had that one, you could have probably. Oh yeah, this, I mean, the other was... ones that they showed, those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I had actually, I priced it based on um, items that were built already so i didn't see a kit but i saw 90 dollars ones of these that had already been completely done so i thought i did the 175 but after mid-january i thought you know what i'm gonna drop it down a bit and see if i can at least pick the money up because that's what i keep telling everybody is like don't sit on something even though i only had five bucks in it it was a big amount of space and i thought i'll try this i did put it on etsy at the same time i didn't really have any views on it on etsy and then as our my shipping got it says Luckily, we had the perfect box. And the, that's the one thing I will say. Before I listed this, I said to Rick, can you find a box for this? So it was actually sitting in the box so that when we went to sell it, 
there wasn't going to be anything like he had to build the box for that game because it was just like yeah. an inch too big on every side for every box. So he had to cut and build a, a like Franken box to get to that. I have a Disney Tinkerbell a tree topper that has the perfect box. Like I was like, oh my god, it's like was made for this thing. Um, fantastic. That's Love probably that. one of the weirdest things about reselling is when you have the perfect box <laughs> for shipping <laughs> something. It's like, oh, 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 oh. yeah, it's an it's a awesome, awesome moment. Um, this is uh, another interesting like an eclectic obviously elisa is a random reseller a ferrari bucket champagne bucket so so the the backstory on that is you see the insides kind of weirdly gross yeah um but <laughs> <laughs> that's what the whole thing looked like and i i was at my local goodwill and and the the girl is um saying i don't know what this is I said, oh, it looks like a, it looks like a waste paper, waste basket. And I like weird waste baskets. So I saw for, and then I kind of looked at it and I said, oh, like Ferrari. And then, you know, I just did a quick Google search and I'm like, oh, this could go for a lot of money. And so I, I got some metal cleaner and I cleaned it and then the tarnish came back and I cleaned it again. And it, you know, it, and it actually, turn it was heavy it's heavy too it's, it's silver plate and it went to denmark wow. which i've i've never sold anything to denmark but it's a it's a a cooler it's a like a like an ice bucket like a yeah. wine bucket thingy Ch champagne bucket specifically for, yeah. for car racing that too oh yeah that makes sense but it, again interesting though that you've got something that has some flaws to it Mm -hmm. And it's still something that somebody's paying 140 bucks for, and getting it like shipping for that must have been like, yeah. What? But people are weird. They like they spent they'll spend crazy money on just like the door handle from the car they're looking they're looking to rebuild. Like it's ridiculous. Now, Adrian doesn't just buy from Max Old, so I'm going to show you a few of his buys that he actually got. That I think most of these are from. They're, they're well, a couple of them are from, from different places. You'll tell me where they're from. Yeah. First one is share. If I can turn back time. No, oh, please don't. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that was a uh, baggy wall, four ninety nine. No, I was a uh, sorry, not baggy wall. Um, uh, Max, no. the doll basket. The doll basket. Yes, exactly. And there were another doll there, a junkie doll wearing that green outfit, which I knew did not belong to her because it was too long for her. I went, that must be shares as well. And sure enough, it's mint julep. And so I got to sell the doll with two outfits and uh, for 40 bucks. Yeah. For bucks. So well, not bad last, for $4.99, last $4 less 20%, may I say. That's creepy. She gives a backstory. Same purchase. This was in a baggy wall for uh, three ninety nine, dollars along with a bunch of other ceramic and, and um, uh, resin figurines. And that's a Canadian exclusive left in the figure from Japan from the 1950s uh, of a white foal. Um, and because uh, it's Canadian exclusive, very, very interesting to collectors in the States. 25 bucks? 25 bucks. Uh, this is a uh, Facebook marketplace. Um, and this is, take note, people, uh, this is Atlantic. Atlantic is. Uh, an Italian toy soldier company from the 70s, right? Uh, and they create figures who are 60 millimeter and, and they are some of the most incredibly detailed sculpts we'll ever see, ever. They have a set of, of the Chinese Revolution and they have a set called uh, Sheriffs and Outlaws where they actually have a hanged person <laughs> as one of the toys you can buy. Uh, and those two sets go for hundreds, but these are always will go for money. And uh, I spent $20, including shipping. Um, uh, from Facebook Marketplace, my guy in Montreal. So you, where was it sitting on Facebook Marketplace? Just it was just sitting. I, I searched under Toy Soldiers and, and this popped up, oh. and then so, flipped it for seventy. Yeah, very nice. Are you supposed uh, to please. paint them or something? What's that? Are you supposed to paint them or are they like it? Uh, no, people can, uh, uh, but they're they're highly collectible just as they are. Yeah. Uh, many, many, many Toy Soldier manufacturers are just single solid colored toys um uh it's only companies like britain's and timpo that really sort of 
push the limits by by making different colored one by painting and one by doing over molding with different colored plastics and that became then the, the factory that became the standard in, in the 70s it was for people to paint their figures but they came out really crappy because the type of plastic that most people use doesn't accept paint easily or well the paint clips right off so um if you were to paint these you'd need to prime them first uh, because the plastic is is bendy and it will just literally flake off but these are wonderful ever find them atlantic atlantic actually uh, toy soldiers always say like, buy them one single figure you can sell for 15 bucks there, yeah, I, and again, it's some, something that you need to have somebody who knows a little bit more about this kind of thing, um, especially if you're going to try and send some, something like this. I think this is going to be <laughs> the weirdest thing that I I can believe that, like... Carol Chatty. <laughs> I think I've seen that. I have seen this movie. Oh, my God. <laughs> I did see this movie. I, yeah. I'm so proud of my boys. They never forget their mama. <laughs> I found um, they there. It's actually from the VHS release in 1982 or eight, between 80, 81, 82. There's a date on there. It's a poster. Uh, it's a poster. Um, and I got a whole bunch of like, these this horrible B movie horror posters that were released on VHS from someone who who had a store, and they were all brand you know like new, rolled up, no creases, no nothing. And, I mean, I have like Blood Blood Beach. I have a lot of them, and I've I I mean they they, they slowed down for a while, but you know for Mother's Day coming up, you know get mom something nice, you know like a severed head in a box. Wow, look at that! Oh, I, I've sold them for 175 before too. Bravo. Wow. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, and again, that's the kind of thing that can pop up anytime you want. And what I love about this show is is literally there are things that I would just would walk past, and and that would be something I wouldn't even think that it would have, you know, collectible value just to someone. But I love that I learn new things every time I watch this particular show. Heather had asked about where is it signed Atlantic, so it's on there. Is Atlantic on the actual plastic at all, right, Adrian? Uh, I normally show a picture of the bottom, but uh, I don't believe Atlantic stamps their figures on the bottom. Okay. Um, we found the one thing. I just wanted to give you an update on one of the things, which is, you know, we found these guys, and we have now sold five of the eight of them. <laughs> Car was so bad right now. Seven ninety nine for, and four of them sold this month. So yeah, this is. I guess I get to rub into Carl like you rub into uh, the doll, the the doll lot for me. But yeah, we sold. It says five sold, but one guy didn't pay. So I actually sold four of them so far this month. So, but that was great because it's a, again, that's like five hundred bucks US, and they wow. all cost me seven ninety nine Canadian a piece. Going to walk right past those two. <laughs> <laughs> and as Carl said, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> uh, Craig, Craig did the 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 cat thingy get to Hawaii? Okay, the waving cat thingy. I love how last month Carl said, uh, "Yeah, three years of friendship will be over like that." <laughs> Just shove you out of the way, grab your cart, and run. And one other thing for Adrian is you don't always have to be shopping. Hmm. Yes. This is something sitting around his house. This was from my ex, David. He uh, he bought them for me, and they were quite expensive. And uh, I thought they looked awful on me because I have a round head, and those are round glasses. It just looks ridiculous. And so I wore them twice, and then I lost them. Um, and he was really mad about it because they were expensive, but I um, hope he never sees this video. But then they just sat there on my, on my table forever. And I'm, you know, I should sell these. I'm never, ever going to wear them. So 44 bucks for $0 invested. Love it. Nice glasses. So a neat amount of really interesting stuff. Um, bought from various places, mostly sold on eBay. Uh, I forgot to put in my Etsy stuff, but <laughs> one of the things that we've done is we have been selling a lot on whatnot and actually next tuesday's show is very simply going to be saying why are you not selling on whatnot okay selling on whatnot why not <laughs> um and we actually fight. have sherry who's right here who says she's always learning what to look out for sherry's going to be on us so she's she, sherry b uh, sherry's going to be joining us uh from the us and uh vintiquity 
is going to be joining us. And uh, Ventiquity is Nuria Sanchez, and she's actually in Victoria, BC. And she sells on whatnot from Canada using Canada Post. So it's going to be, we sell on whatnot from Canada using a cross border shipper. So you're going to have three completely different ways of people selling stuff. Sherry in the US from the US. She's been doing it for a little over a year now. Me, who've been doing it, me and Rick have been doing it for now 19 months, selling from Canada but using a US shipper. And Nuria selling from Canada for almost two years now. Uh, and you can see in a couple of the cases there, this is, for example, Sherry has a show tomorrow. Uh, and you can look her up. And if you just, uh, this, oh, sorry, this is Ventiquity. Here's Sherry. Sherry's got shows coming up uh, on a Kentucky Derby jewelry train, bangles. So she does a lot of stuff with jewelry. Uh, Ventiquity's got a show, a couple of shows coming up. Wood, brass, and glass raid train. She does jewelry. She's doing another raid train. She does shop my store. She does all sorts of different stuff in there. And she's sold, uh, I think when we look at her, 2,000 followers. She's sold over uh, 2,000 items. Wow. And then ourselves, we've sold over 1,500 items on them. And uh, we are actually got four shows coming up. We actually are probably going to plan on a, like another six or seven or so. Um, right now, the, the thing that we love about Whatnot is um, it's basically the equivalent of being seeing YouTube. Or if you're if you do Poshmark and you see Poshmark Lives, that's basically what it is. It's also on Pop Shop. They do lives, but whatnot is a different sort of animal. Um, Sherry does it and doesn't go on camera, but she has her setup and shows her hands. We do it so we flip back and forth. So you can take a look at some of our shows. If you look up Two Dogs Digs, look up Sherry B, or look up Antiquity over the next week or so, and um, then you can be prepared to. Oh, and Sherry's husband's show is first show is Saturday, so. Um, We'll put uh, those up uh, as a link in uh, in the craft group as well. So, but the fees on it are not that heavy unless you sell stuff for a buck, and a lot of people do. Um, so there are a lot of ways that you can use it and try it as a different marketplace. Um, there are lots of different kinds of things to sell on it. Uh, some people have good success in it. Some people don't. We're going to take you through next Tuesday. We're going to take you through how it's set up. How, are, how how you do it, what the fees are, all the little ins and outs. We're trying to do this. The great thing is that the buyers pay the shipping. And so it's really simple. They When they look at anything, they'll see how much the shipping costs. And in some cases, once they hit a certain amount, $8.35 if you're using the regular priority, uh, then everything they buy from that one pound to five pounds, they don't end up paying any extra money for shipping on. So we had somebody yesterday or Sunday night in our show, who I uh, ended up spending about $250 on uh, a bunch of dolls and toys that we had. So we've had shows that have done zero. We've had shows that have done five bucks. We've been on shows that after 15 minutes, no one's visited us. And we said, bye-bye. We've also had shows that have done 500, 600, $700 in two to three hours and got rid of tons of stuff. And the big thing about them that we, we like now is once you hit 1,000 um, items sold, you have instant payout. Literally, the day we ship, the money is in our bank account. Like, we just have to transfer it. The money's there. You don't have to wait. When you're starting out for the first 1,000 items, it has to go until it gets delivered before your funds are released. But it's a really interesting way of looking at it. Um, Bob did try it once with Heather and went, no, after about five minutes. And I can understand why, because it can be quite intimidating but it really shouldn't be it's you really set your own prices huh you can set your own prices you set all your own prices so you don't have to have anything cheap i saw a guy who's just started he's doing barbies he just sold two barbie dolls one for twelve hundred and fifty dollars and one for seventeen hundred dollars he's a well-known name of a barbie collector and he had this was three dollars this was six dollars this was seventeen hundred and fifty and it sold um there are some I'll call them influencers, reselling influencers, I guess you could call them, who go on there and people shop from them and for some reason pay three, four, five times what the value is of stuff. But oh, I know those people, yeah. It's a great way, kind of like Max sold, to get rid of inventory, to purge out a lot of things, to do a lot of things at once. And it's nice when you sell 60 items in an hour and a half and you take one picture of them and hold them up. That's the thing we like about it the most is we sell all this stuff and go, wait, oh, now we just transferred $1,000 into our account. And it's 
taking a lot longer for us to do that on Etsy. It's hoping somebody sees it. So you don't have to have giant followings. You don't have to have big YouTube followings. All you need is people to come to your show and buy. We a- we average eight to 20 people in a show. Don't have to have 60, 100, 200, 300 people. Take a look at it. Just go to whatnot. Um, we'll have a li- There's a link that's on the outside of this. If you're joining us, take a look at the link for here and you'll see two ways to join it. Um, and then if you do decide you want to become a seller, if you use the link for the seller, they they pay us a hundred dollar fee to have you try. We'll split it with you. Like we'll all you have to do is do one show and sell one thing, and then you get fifty bucks. So it's even worth trying it for that. Yes, I do help Rick pack every time we are doing those shows, Rick. Yes, yes. <laughs> I basically do the lists and I pack the single things, and when it comes to the multiples. Craig pitches in and helps do that. Yeah. <laughs> Sherry says, Heather. Uh, oh, I know. Yeah. So uh, when Sherry's husband's doing it, Jeff, she want, he wants Sherry to do all the talking. Heather did what she tried and end up cursing. Everyone heard. Yes. I, I heard Bob <laughs> curse too. Uh, <laughs> you can click a little dot on it that says if you're going to go and you can be ex- like explicit. You just have to click the little dot. And Sherry said it took her a year to get 1,600 followers. It doesn't mean she has 1,600 people in her show, but she has a bunch of followers. And every time something comes up, people end up looking at you. So I really want people to think about that, especially because, and this is the good thing about Vintiquity being on, she's from Vancouver Island. She has no access to a cross-border shipper. So she is doing it using Canada Post. So Carl, that's something that you could use. Anybody who's in a market that does not have access to a cross-border shipper in Canada has a way to sell because she's sold 2,000 things from Canada using whatnot. So we'll talk a lot more about that next week. So a big thank you to Elisa for joining us on her first time here on our What's Sold in Thanks Market. for coming to play. I didn't curse, mostly. Oh, you didn't curse. <laughs> we did learn about your penchant for serial killers. That was nice to know live. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, but thank you. <laughs> Everything I sold was about death. And Adrian, hopefully, <laughs> you like the show. sell some more stuff for next month. Uh, if it's from the Barbie show, you're out. If it, uh, <laughs> unless, it's, unless, that. unless it's any of those dolls that Elisa helps you write a lovely story for, you got to pull one of those dolls out and write a creepy story, and just to see if we can sell that thing in the next month. Well, yeah, send send me send me something, Adrian, like a, your creepiest creepiest doll, and I'll write a little story. Well, and we'll there's a couple of dolls which which have. Uh, uh, they have this weird white mold on their eyelids. And so when that, like, you lie them down, their eyes close, it looks like they have like white eyes. It's very creepy as hell. They're possessed. Yep. They're That's possessed. perfect. And we can do a film. And then, Adrian, you can speak over the little video and do the little narration. Little, we got to do the little story. This is something, that, this is one thing we got to do from this. So a big thank you to everybody who joined us, especially those of you who are in the Kennel Club. Thank you very much for supporting us here on Two Dogs Dig. And make sure we see you in craft as well. And if you're joining us again after the fact, Throw us a comment, give us a thumbs up, and hopefully you subscribe for future shows. Carl will be back next month in May to do the What's Sold. We promise we'll have a Yay, Carl! Thanks, everyone! Bye!